Christy, thanks for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. Uh, how did Matthew's ministry begin? Matthew's ministry actually started um, in September 2010. At a mom's prayer group, we received a prayer request from a teacher to pray for a child in her class that did not have food to eat at home. And that began this journey for my family as um, immediately I emailed girlfriends and started collecting food on my front porch and um, thinking at the time it was just for one family and not now realizing that there's many more children that do not have food in this county. First things first, uh, tell us what the backpack program is. Uh, the backpack program, the way it works, is children who are identified for the program through social workers, guidance counselors, or parent facilitators receive a separate backpack for food. Uh, this backpack goes out every Friday filled with food for the weekend because most of these children receive uh, free breakfast and free lunch at the school. They do not have that on the weekends, obviously. And then the backpack is returned empty on Mondays and refilled again. So the purpose is to provide uh, food and sustenance for uh, school weekend children meals, yes. on the weekends yes. who otherwise would not have food. Exactly. Terrific. Um, where, where did you get the name Matthew's Ministry? Matthew's Ministry comes from the book of Matthew in the Bible, um, chapter 25, which says, whatever you do for the least of my brothers, you do for me. And children certainly fit into that category. So that's where the name came from. Well, it's, it's a great story, and we want our viewers to know a little bit more about it. Uh, how many students and how many schools uh, do you provide food for? Right now, we provide uh, food for 500 Brunswick County students each week representing 12 area schools. And that has grown from one student in 2010. So it's grown very, very quickly. Wow. Okay, a uh, couple of quick questions. Where do you get your food? The food is all donated. And um, we have drop-off locations. The main one is at Southport Realty in Southport next to Taylor's where people bring food to donate for the program. And then individual monetary donations are used to purchase food. Um, to meet the needs of food that's not donated. All food and money is individual donations, and wow. um, it's amazing to see how the community has come together so for that. So it's entirely a private endeavor. Entirely private. Um, it is a 501c3, so any food or money that's donated is tax deductible. Sure, um, that's good. But it's something that the whole community has reached out to support. Wow. Okay, uh, how do you identify students in need? Usually the student is identified by a social worker who recognizes either in their school environment the student is showing signs of hunger at school that might come to their attention because of a teacher. Or a lot of times you see these kids in the cafeteria and they eat everything on their plate, which is not typical of a, of a little kid. Little kids are picky and these kids are not picky and they a lot of times want more food. So they're identified by a teacher or a social worker, and then the social worker gets the paperwork to the family, family fills it out, and then we start the process. Wow, that's a touching uh, story. Uh, prior to our going on the air, you told me a, a somewhat personal story, and I'd like our viewers to hear it. Yes, I, I was telling you about a child. Um, I do not know the identi identities of these children who receive the food, but a lot of the kids who see me know that I bring food for backpacks. And uh, a child had seen me at school and ran up to me because she forgot her backpack that week. And she was so upset because she said, when she goes home on Friday, there is no food at her house. And that, to me, really emphasized the need for this program in this county. And, of course, we made arrangements, got food for her, but the children are depending on this food. There is not food in their homes. And... In 2012, America, that's just not acceptable at all. Hunger hurts. Yes, hunger really hurts. Uh, so we're talking about uh, considerably large amounts of food. They come to you, one of your storage facilities. Yes. And then how do they land uh, at the school and then in the student's backpack? Well, I have teams of shoppers each week. There's a team for each school, and they go out weekly, purchase the food that's on this shopping list. They bring it back to Southport Realty where I store the food, and then volunteers come, pick up the food, and distribute it to the schools so that they can pack it in the backpacks. And logistically, that's uh, it quite is a, a challenge. Yes, it's a challenge, but I have over 30 volunteers in the county. It, it works. It's, it's like a factory assembly line. It works perfect, and um, I could not do it without them. That's great. 
You mentioned that a lot of your food is donated, but you obviously depend on uh, cash contributions as well. What's the relative uh, percentage of each? I had just, I've just been working on grants, so I can answer this um, pretty accurately. Good. We have about 50% of the food is donated. 50% has to be purchased each month. So each month I spend roughly $3,500 on buying the additional food, and then the other half of the food is donated to go in the backpacks. And as to the food donors, um, are they as small as individuals and as large as yes. some companies? I received my first grant this week from ATMC. Um, just got it on Wednesday night, and so it can be corporations, it can be civic organizations, it can be churches or individuals. I have individuals that pledge money to me monthly, and then um, I'll go talk to different groups and, and get people to give that way as well. Any amount can be used, and any amount at a grocery store can be used. If you're at the grocery store and see a box of granola bars and want to donate that, that is just as valuable to me as, as a money donation. Great. And most of, uh, well, virtually all of it should be non-perishable. Yes. All, I do not have a facility that can do any perishable goods, um, so all non-perishables, but I can really use anything that, it, that is donated. And that leads me to my next question. What really is your greatest need at this point? Well, our greatest need, each week we have a set shopping list, um, a shopping list A and shopping list B, and we like things that are lighter for the backpacks because they're little kids carrying them. Sure. So macaroni and cheese, ramen noodles, pastas, always are great things, granola bars, crackers, soups, Chef Boyardee's, things that are easy to prepare, wouldn't necessarily need a parent to prepare it if they're home after school alone because we do go up to middle school and high school students. So those are the things we need the most. This is somewhat of a technical question, but tell us about your operating costs. This is not an insubstantial matter that you're involved in. Um, the wonderful thing about this ministry is I don't have any operating costs. I have no paid employees. Good. I have a facility that is donated space to me for free. So any money that is given to Matthew's ministry, 100% of it is used for food. And that's another thing that's near and dear to me because all these people that have volunteered their time are strictly volunteers. Well, it's an heroic effort, and I know our viewers are going to be inspired by your story and your contribution. Uh, tell us how to get in touch, uh, whether you have a website and any other contact information. I do have a website. It's uh, www.matthewsministry.com, and on that website is my email address. There's a place where you can put your email address and sign up for a monthly newsletter as needs change each month. And I also have a Facebook page, Matthew's Ministry. So those are two ways people can kind of keep up with what the program's doing. Good. Your organization has grown from one to 500 in such a short period of time. And my guess is that you'll continue to grow it because the needs of these students will, will not go away. That's correct. And it's always important. Um, I think two things that I'm going to need in the near future are uh, people who will help me spearhead a corporate fundraising so that we can raise money uh, to enable this to continue. Right. And also, the other big need I'm going to have is I'm going to need a bigger warehouse. Southport Realty has been so generous. They've done this for, for me for two years for free, but the food um, is soon going to overtake the space, and so I'm going to need another place to keep the food. And let's, those are going to be the two things I focus on in 2013. Let's hope there are uh, a few viewers out there that will think of that need and help us fill it. That would be wonderful. Now, I know you speak uh, to civic groups and others frequently. Tell us about that. Uh, any group, civic, church, um, any individual organization, some, I will get requests to come and speak, and that seems to be the best way to get the word out, too, about Matthew's ministry. So if you are a member of a group that you would like me to come and tell you my story and how it started and, and how it's growing, I would love to do that. And my, like I said, my email address is on the website. Uh, Christy Disro, you're making a difference uh, in the lives of hundreds of children, and we thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks.